everybody! Thanks for tuning in. As you can see, this is going to be a full face video today. Um, we're going to be focusing on a brand where I feel like, where have I been? Where have I been with this brand? It's been in Ulta for a while, but I just haven't really dug into it. And it's called Kiko Milano. And I've got some things from it. For whatever reason, I started pouring over their selection of things a couple weeks ago. And I was really drawn in by some things that I believe are limited edition. And I think maybe that's one thing that's sort of held me back a bit with this brand is because I feel like I've seen some cool and cute things come out, but they're things that seem to be like from a limited edition collection. So maybe I've stepped back and said, well, that may not be relevant for very long, you know, but I just started digging a little further and I came up with a literal handful of things that I was really excited to try. Probably more, honestly, but I kept it to this. But this brand, if you look into them on their like about us on their own website, it says Kiko Milano was established and founded in 97 by Percasy. It's an Italian professional cosmetics brand that features a range of cutting edge makeup, face, and body treatments. So made in Italy, price-wise, it's kind of an in-betweener. Um, you're going to notice the range of costs being largely like between $10 and $25, give or take a few products that fall outside that range. So I'm just going to do a full face with some of the things that I've been playing with lately, and I got to say, I have been really impressed. Um, this stuff seems to be really, really good. So my skin is already prepped. Um, they had some different coverage options but I went with the full coverage two-in-one foundation and concealer and I got it in the shade N35. It was really hard on Ulta's website to determine my shade from this brand. It's a miracle that this shade works as well as it does because it was just like it was really difficult for me to um, determine what I'd be. But we've got this doe foot applicator here. Okay, so we're going to swipe this on. And this is, as you're going to see, it's amazing coverage. It's great staying power. It's just like a really good product for me. This is my Profusion FD1 Buffing Foundation Brush. And I'm going to use this today because I just want you to see like the max of where this foundation can go. Because I think a brush takes you to the maximum coverage. And then in the future, I'll use a beauty blender with it because that always kind of takes the coverage down a notch, but it still looks beautiful on the skin, you know? Um, but I just want you to see where this goes with the brush first. And my skin is really well moisturized underneath, but I did not use a specific uh, primer. But do you see this coverage and this gentle, like, luminosity? It's so pretty. It does not feel thick to touch my skin. Um, it's, you know, a little tacky, but nothing like, wow, your skin feels sticky after that. It does kind of start to set a little bit into the skin, but I just feel like it's an undeniable, pretty, healthy, even look. I just love it so much. And some might say, well, is it buildable? So I'm going to take that over a couple of areas where I can always kind of detect buildability on my skin. And that's here where I have some melasma. So I add a little bit there, a little bit there. Um, really nice packaging, nice size, really good like closure, just, I don't know, small details, but quality, quality stuff. So I'm just dabbing over that and I can see that the coverage is boosting up a little bit. I don't feel like it's as much as a full coverage concealer would be um, because this is called again two-in-one foundation and concealer. But to me I would say it is a full coverage foundation. It's definitely enough coverage to drop into that category for me. But I just love how it still seems so skin-like. You know I blended that in and I just feel like yeah you know that looks that looks nice. Need a sip of coffee this morning. I got a coffee story for you. Um, I do that Instacart delivery most often with my Aldi stuff. And one time, quite a while ago, I had, I think, maybe accidentally selected decaf coffee, like the K-Cups, for my coffee maker. And it was just like such a letdown. <laughs> like, I really, really need that caffeine. And ever since, anytime I add coffee to my order, I'm like really certain that I'm selecting the caffeinated version, not the decaf. And Sunday, when I got my groceries, I was like unloading them and you know everything looked fine and I added my new k-cups to my little k-cup holder and then Monday morning rolls around and I make my coffee and I drink my coffee and I really didn't notice anything different um, which is strange to me but it was decaf I was looking at the cups this morning as my coffee maker was just like in that little warming up time and I look at it and in tiny letters it said decaf and I was like, oh man. And so I dug like into a little like holder I have for overflow coffee and I found some regular 
for myself. But like, how did I not notice it more? I mean, I know there's still in decaf coffee, there's a little bit of caffeine, but I don't know if you noticed anything different about me in my last video, I was fueled on decaf. <laughs> But it was their mistake because I know I didn't buy decaf. Like they just happened to pick up the wrong one, which is an honest mistake. And to tell you the truth, the Instacart people are usually like freaking flawless in this area. I don't know what the deal is, but generally speaking, they do a pretty perfect job. But just watch out for that coffee. Watch out for that. Um, okay, concealer. I got two different concealers. Not, I'm not sure why, but I got the Universal Stick Concealer, okay? And this is in the shade 04 for me. And then I got the Full Coverage Concealer. Then underneath that, it says High Coverage Concealer. Is the shade 01? I think so. I would say this concealer, I've really been playing around with it. It's very stiff kind of dry. I'm not saying it's bad because it really doesn't look super dry on the skin, but it, the way it's kind of affected by that texture is the blendability, the spreadability, the ease in working it into the skin. It is really good coverage, but it's just kind of stiff and a little on the dry side, whereas this Universal Stick Concealer I find to be very creamy, easy, nice glide across the skin, just quick and easy application. I mean, this may emerge as one of my new favorite stick concealers, honestly. So I'm going to take this like right around this zone and kick it out that way. So this shade, as you can see, is a little brightening on me. Give myself like a little in between the brows. There we go. You know what I might wear this foundation for this weekend? I'm uh, one of the MCs for the Miss Illinois finals on Saturday night. I'm really excited. I've had a little bit to do with the organization from judging back a few years ago. It was a really good experience. I was asked a while back, would you MC? And I'm like, well, okay. You know, like I, I had some hesitation at first because I just thought oh, I'm going to have to get a nice dress. I'm going to have to take the time to prepare and all this and that. And I don't have like a ton of extra time, but something told me just do it. You know, it'll be fun. So I'm doing it. And I got my scripts and my name pronunciation guide. <laughs> and the winner of this goes on to Miss America, the Miss America competition. I was just thinking this foundation might look really good for that. But look at this concealer, guys. Stick concealer. It blended in so easy. It just blended in with a simple like dabbing motion over top. I used my Real Techniques. Um, this is actually called the 413. It's a highlighter brush. It's like a tiny buffing brush. Um, but I like it for concealer. And again, texture of the skin looking phenomenal, but also having coverage. I'll show you just a bit of this other concealer. Just maybe we'll do a little right in here, just so you can see like it's a real full coverage, but it just has this stiffness. You have to work it in just a little more on purpose. It still does not look overly dry. I've got to be honest, like I was really looking for that the other day. I wore this and this alone and um, I can't say it looked bad, but there we are with all of that. Then I got this face palette. It's called the Smart Essential Face Palette and it just looks very basic and it's got these six shades in it. Um, they call both of these bronzers and this to me is more of like just a face powder color. Um, it doesn't have shimmer, but it's like, I don't know. It's good for me all over the face. It's not maybe my ideal for something brightening that would set the under eye, but a matte bronzer powder, this highlight, and then three different blushes here. I wish the blush selection was switched up a little bit more, you know, like a little more range with that. But we're going to play with this today and see how it goes. I'm first going to take this powder, what I'll just call face powder, uh, because it really, you know, it's nowhere close to bronzer for me. And I will just dab this around and you can see how it does on my skin tone. Like I said, it's, it's okay to set my under eye, but it's not providing any additional brightness. The textures of these powders though, very smooth, rich feeling, nice powders. And I'm just using this little angled guy, this angled powder PD3 from Profusion, experimenting with some of their different face brushes, thinking about doing a whole video on it, but just trying to very like on purpose press this into the skin. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm looking a little more mattified because of this. Okay, so there's that powder just setting everything. Then I'm gonna go to the bronzer. They give you a nice deep bronzer in this. And yes, this is the only shade option available for this palette. 
but I see the bronzer working here. It's very buildable. It doesn't show up quite as like, whoa, that's dark as you might think it would. And that's nice. We like a subtle build with bronzer, right? A little contour with this. This helps you see it even better, I think. Subtle, easy, um, believable, I would say. Yeah, I, I buy that. <laughs> Is this a brand that you hear a lot of people talking about on YouTube? Like, am, am I missing it? Like, I'm calling myself out in this video as like, where have I been on this brand? But frankly, I haven't heard a ton of buzz about it elsewhere. Um, but obviously, I would love to hear your product suggestions in the comments below. It really, like, honestly, it took some time to build, which is surprising because it looks so dark in the pan. Uh, swatching it out, it looks about like that. It's not like it's unpigmented, but it's a slow build up on the cheeks for sure. Next up, we're gonna go for some blush and I'm gonna use this brighter one in the middle first. You know, if we got a blush palette, we'll probably hop around to a couple, but this appears to be a matte blush and I'm not noticing any shimmer actually in all the blushes. The only shimmer finish seems to be the highlight. So there's that, just this nice pinky easy color here. I mean, this face palette, I do like it, but I can't say I'm absolutely blown away, you know? It's one of those products where I kind of come away thinking, it's nice and it's fine, no problem. There's that blush shade, you know, I, I would like a little more intensity. Let's go to this one, just see if that adds anything to it. Maybe a bit more warmth in that color. Like I said, I'd like this shade to be a little lighter. I'd like the blushes to be like maybe this one and then this one a little darker and this one just like a totally different tone or something. But it's still a decent everyday palette and this highlighter is nice here. So I'm gonna dab into that. Get a little bit of that on top of the cheeks. It's not a glaringly off the charts highlight, but it's pretty. Like it definitely restores some of that skin-like finish, you know? That surface of the skin that I was really noting early on after we completed like foundation and concealer. Oh, we'll get a little bit of what's left on the brush up here. Nice little Cupid's bow action, sure. So there's my complexion steps coverage. I'm super happy about uh, the foundation and the stick concealer, definitely my faves. Face palette, good, but not amazing. Um, I'm gonna set with a little bit of Fix Plus. And then guys, since I don't have a brow product from this brand, I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna throw together a quick eye look. Brows are done. Um, I threw on some eye primer as well. And the eye look is really gonna be very simple in this video because I didn't actually order one of their eye palettes. The availability of eye stuff in this brand didn't really make me go, whoa, I need that. You know, I looked at some of the different options and just thought, uh, uh, maybe I'll wait it out. I'll try what I have. I'll see how impressed I am with this line and maybe go back and try it another time. Um, so what I did get was one of their shadow sticks. And then I thought with this face palette, I could maybe use like the bronzer in my crease and just create a really easy look, you know? I just didn't want to force it. I looked at the palettes and I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've done that before, right? Okay, I'm gonna take a crease brush. This is my pointed crease. Um, I should, wait, no, that wasn't the one I wanted to grab. <laughs> yes. I wanted the Firm Blending ES2 from Profusion. It's like a Sigma E25. And I wanna go into that bronzer, which I think is gonna just work perfect in my crease for a little darkness here. And then this will be my first time trying the shadow stick. I've been playing with everything else for days, but I hadn't had a chance to use the shadow stick yet. But in swatching it, it does seem to be along the lines of the shadow sticks we love that go on very full color and then set. So you see, gang, you can always do this with your bronzer. Just get a little subtle crease going. Um, I could easily dab the highlight on there as well. Heck, I could go over the border of my bronzer with one of these barely there blushes. Okay, easy. Now we're gonna throw this on the lid. So this is the Long Lasting Shadow Stick, eight hours, no transfer, it says in the shade 05. I could get into some shade names, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt to have some shade names. But look at this pretty color. It's like, oh, rose gold. And I'm just getting that on all over my eyelid and then I'm gonna dab over that. Beautiful mid-tone shade, the sheen, the pigment, oh, really, really pretty. And the reason why I dab over top is just because that sort of removes any excess 
that might be on there. Okay, I'm feeling that. If you look up close at me, you can see like the little flecks of shimmer particles that I think are gonna hang on because again, this is a cream. Then I'm gonna do liner, mascara, and a quick lash. There's the eye. I felt like adding a lash just because the eye itself was so subtle. I thought it might be pretty to have a lash on with it. Um, so this is my, I believe they're the Kiss my lash bit better in the style no filters and then i added like one more coat of my shadow stick there just because i thought it made it shine even more i was just really careful to not put too much on like i just did a once over kind of in the center of the lid and i think that's so so pretty so the last thing i have is a gloss and this was showing up on kiko milano's own website as like a bestseller this 3d hydra lip gloss i got the shade 08 and we're gonna pop this on i really like this gloss um, I love the just the container, the format. It kind of reminds me of the Revlon Ultra HDs and the smell of it. Oh my gosh, it's like it's like my mom's sugar cookie dough. But like the smell I really get out of the dough. Kind of strange, but it's like baked goodness, but not overly sweet yet. It looks in the tube like sort of a deep peach, and I'm not really seeing any shimmer in this shade. The texture of it is incredible. As you can see, there's most definitely some sheerness with this gloss. I mean, you could add a lip liner to it and get a little more color out of it, which I have done. Um, but the gloss on its own is just super shiny, pretty sheer, but you are still getting some of that peachy nude color. There is a nice thickness to it. It's kind of like a moisturizing thickness. It's not there in an annoying way. It's just really, I think, pleasant to have on the lips. I really like this gloss. I would definitely try more shades in it. But yeah, this is my mostly Kiko Milano face. I'm sorry, I kind of started to realize that I didn't try a ton of different eye things. That really wasn't what was grabbing me so much as the face steps. So my favorite things, my number one and number two products are definitely this full coverage two in one foundation and concealer, and then the Universal Stick Concealer. Those two together, like they just look so good. They cover, but yet they don't look heavy, but they also don't look like off the charts shimmery either. They just look like healthy skin. Like this is the healthy skin covered skin duo for sure. Love it. I also really like the lip gloss. It's making me want to try more. Like it's it's comfortable, it's shiny, it's everything I just described. Um, and I like the stick too. This may not be the most unique product because there are a lot of brands that are doing, you know, a long wearing shadow stick. This shade is very pretty. If you're into kind of the rose gold, it comes off I think with more of like a taupe rose gold combo look on the eyes. Um, it's very pretty. The full coverage concealer in the pot, I would say it's good, but it has this little bit thicker, drier consistency, especially compared to that beautiful glide of the stick concealer. The cream in the pot just seems a little heavier. You gotta work a little harder to blend it, but it still can be worked with. It's just not my favorite. And also not my favorite would be the face palette. If we're gonna be given three blushes, I think we need to go a little deeper, a little richer. Like maybe this is the light colored palette. If they would swap out that for a lighter powder, this could be a really good like light to medium palette maybe. And then a medium to deep palette that had some richer blush options. Cause if they're gonna put in three, I think there needs to be more variety. I love the idea of something like this though. You know I love that and it can work on eyes just fine. You could use the entire thing for an eye look with the bronzer in the crease and the highlight or one of those blushes or the um, other shade on the lid. It could definitely work for you in that way as well. It's not a total fail, just a little bit of a miss for me. But all in all, I'm super impressed by the brand. I'm really wondering why I hadn't come into it sooner and I'm definitely wanting to try more. So let me know your favorites from Kiko Milano in the comments section. Again, it can be found on Ulta's website. You can also look up the brand's website for more info, and I will talk to you guys again very soon. Love you. Bye.